Un poquito de español. Sometimes. That's it because we just began with you a little bit of Spanish. Yeah, because I write everything in Spanish. Right. Okay, so the third uh, section is converting one's life according to a profound mental change. So question number seven is what does it mean to me to convert my life in accordance with a profound mental change. Question number seven. It sounds like, does it sound, in a way it sounds like a, how do you change a change? <laughs> how do I change the change? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Because convert is changing. Right? Mm -hmm. so you're just using a language. <coughs> yeah, but a pro profound change. Yeah. Change a profound change. Convert a change. Finding a way with a center in the world. Finding a way to, to move with a center in the world. A center that maintains my intention to profound change while out in the world and not to get lost in all of the desires that pull me out of that center. Mm -hmm. Because they're there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if I mm -hmm. go out into the world, I bump into them. Mm -hmm. Almost from the second that I open the door and go out. So that there's a much different feeling of losing my center when I open the door and go outside than there is when I'm in the house. It's more or less like I can, maybe I'm, maybe my illusions are different. That, and then I'm, and I fool myself better when I'm in the house. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm more or less centered all the time or some of the time, or more often. But one of the things that's very, very clear is that if I go outside, that changes, and I don't, I no longer have that illusion that I'm sort of centered, <laughs> because I'm not. You know, it's like it's boom, 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 boom all the time, right? Mm -hmm. There's so many stimulations, and it's so hard to to be centered, to be centered, and to keep a sort of intentionality to go towards towards profound change, which is not just nothing, you know, it's a very strong thing yeah, to maintain. Yeah, but when you go out, you, you mean to, to be in contact with the world, help mm -hmm. others and do something more, or what? Or what, right. Yeah, yeah. what is the difference, because it's, you say... No, but the thing is, if you can't even, can't even go out in the world just to go to the store, without still feeling centered. It's like, how are you then going to go out and create an environment for profound change for others? You know, so it's, it's, again, I think it's that, you know, you're home and you're doing all this work and it's, it's all intellectual. So you have to go out in the world and have that experience and say like, whoa, I really haven't done it. But then you have to do it then, you have to do it there, in the world, in that moment and start working on, okay, what do I need to do to, you know, because in reality I do have the information, I just have to make it, you know, more physical, more in my being, more in my actions. So you're, you're stuck in the thinking, but there's no actions. And certainly the feeling has been blown away. So I think those are very important steps, is, is, is again, again, I go back to being a witness, that's your word, being, observing, your actions, because it's, you know, and, and Silo said, you know, we're not monastery, you know, monks that go off in a monastery. Yes, it's very easy 
not really. I mean, there's still a lot of yeah. mental distractions, but nevertheless, it's a lot different to go off from the world and meditate and think you're unitive and think everything is centered. Okay, so now go out in the world and do that. That's a whole different, it's a whole different mechanism. Yeah, you know, it's really funny. It, like if you think about other cultures, um, they say, well, I don't think about sex because I cover all the women from head to toe and then they just have their eyes showing, right? But then, of course, you fall in love with a wink or a look <laughs> or something, and then there it goes again. But anyway. Because it's not out of I know, but it's like a way of, it's a way that this culture, that culture, figures out how to handle moving in the world where there are distractions, feminine, Tempt feminine distractions, Temptations. sex Well, the women don't even go out of in the world, so they're not tempted. <laughs> Anyway, so, but it, it's, so the thing is, we can't then just say, well, I think I'm centered, I know I'm centered, and then go out in the world, and then, whoa, I'm, woo, like I want to beat this guy up because he just is blaring his music, and what is that, and start screaming at this person, all right, so let me, let me reflect on this. So, so even though you have to do that in the daily world, this, you still have to go out and do even more. You know, it's like you cannot go out and approach the world until you, you're really, you've perfected this. You know, you, so it's a combination of both. You think you're centered, you go out in the world, whoop, I'm not centered. But that shouldn't really stop you from then doing more work with others. It's, it's that combination. It's always that. See what's happening. Exactly. Exactly, because one is not going to work in isolation. That's not going to work. You can't work in isolation. You have to constantly have that stimulus to get that register of like, okay, I have to work a little more on this, or, ooh, what? That's not, I don't even hear that anymore. That doesn't bother me anymore. So, it's, it's how do you get that feedback? How do you really know unless you've had that register out in the world? Yes, right. We were talking, I was talking with Nicole yesterday, and we were talking about taking your art. Mm -hmm. And for example, she represented artists. She'd say you go to a gallery to show the art <laughs> to the gallery director, mm -hmm. and he as much as says, go away. And this stuff, I'm not interested in anything. This is garbage. You have this nothing, right, right, right exactly. Art. So they're so dismissive and so their noses are so far up in the air that that um, you don't exist as a human being. Mm -hmm. not, not much the less what you're trying to show them. You know? mm -hmm. It's like you're less than human. You're some sort of insect. You're wasting my time. You're really bo yeah. You're bothering me like that. Yeah, right. <laughs> Fly or something. It's an annoyance. Uh huh, an annoyance. Who's still? Right. Wasting. Exactly, right. So that's what, so we were talking about that, and I think that's a perfect example of, of, what I'm not able to do. <laughs> How hard that is. It's hard. It's to hard. have, to have you, dis, to be dismissed, completely dismissed. Yes. You know, right? But then, so it's sort of like that's a mechanical reaction. That's a reaction. Uh -huh. yeah. So it's acknowledging, like, oh, I'm really reacting mechanically. So I, I know I have the tools where I can shift and I can reflect on this and say, well, it doesn't really matter what this person says. All sure. right. So I'll go with somebody else. You know, and if somebody else says the same thing, I mean, it's not easy. It's not easy because the thing on there is like, if that person rejects you, then it's like all of a sudden your whole future is rejected. Yeah, because I go you, you're oh, still thinking, you know, and the external solutions, right. you know, and the solutions are not right. there. Right. No, because somebody's going to tell me, I don't know. Right. Today, all right. these symptoms we see in the world, you know, yes. uh -huh. the other people can see it, right. but we. We see it. Yes. You see? And it's like being timid in the world instead of valiant. You know, it's like you need that. It's not easy. It's scary.
scary. <laughs> it's not easy. It's not easy. Yeah. So for me, I kind of have that same thing of the reference to center, but it's kind of in the opposite direction. Whereas I don't, I feel I don't have a center. My whole life, I've been follow I, different things. I learn. So I used to call it the middle child syndrome. You know, the first child is beloved by the parents. The second child is the the third child is the baby. Oh, we love the little baby. And the middle child is like, so what? We already had a kid. You're a second, whatever. Not important. Mm -hmm. First child has all these photographs. Second child has three photos. You know, like it's just, <laughs> you know, it's yeah. just whatever. So I kind of felt, I said, oh, that's what's going on. So the middle child's task is then to perceive what this person wants or likes so that then you can do that and provide that for them. So that's been kind of my whole life. Okay, I can kind of, I can kind of read you and I can say, okay, Saul is blah, 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 blah. That's what I'll be. So Saul will take an interest in me. You know, that he'll find me interesting or want to talk to me or maybe I can join his group or whatever. And then I'll go and I'll sit with Patricia and she has a very different personality and I'll say like, okay, Patricia is this, this and that. Okay, I need to be this, this and this. So that she'll start to talk to me. She'll find me interesting. So, and I find myself in conversations with different people and my saying contradictory things. But in my mind, I think I'm really saying the same thing, only a little differently so that this person will like me. And I even find myself agreeing with things that I really don't believe in, just so that they won't reject me. So, for me, is, is that self-censorship, trying to find me within this and believe in, in whatever this body, personality. Personality, is, to me, is like another veil. It's just something, that, a role mm -hmm. that you put on. And I'm constantly, I'm the biggest actress in the world. I have so many roles. Du, 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 du. But in the center. Exactly. So, for me, that, that was yeah, but that I really that, worked on. We, we talk about that with Curve by phone. It's a kind of, um, when you realize uh, I am, how you say, in the middle, you know, right. and no center, it's also a kind of um, no affection for yourself. Exactly. It's a you know? total disregard for myself. I, yeah. There's no value in me as a human being. When you start seeing yourself exactly. with not as an enemy, you know, with right. love, with affection, right. that right. will change. There's something Patricia had said last time we were here. I didn't get a chance to really tell her that. It's a very simple conversation about why do people are afraid of change. And she said, it's the I. The I doesn't want to let go. And I was talking to somebody else about this. She says, well, you have so much potential. You have all this. This is, why aren't you following what you are really excited and passionate about? And I'm like, I don't know. What is that? I don't know. I'm intelligent. I, I know this information. I have good interactions with people. Why aren't I doing this? I didn't know. And then the teacher said, well, it's your eye. And that's, I have this big moment mm -hmm. right about that. And it's that eye. And I remember reading about this years ago also. It's, your eye has gotten you here. You know, that's what you, we all need our eye, we all need our egos, whatever, however you want to say it. That's what has allowed us to survive and maintain sure. everything. Okay, so but then the ego, the eye, the eye gets stuck. The eye identifies with that and doesn't want to let go. So it's, it's like, you know, I kind of see like it's a, an exercise where I have to reassure my eye. It's okay, I'm not letting you go. I'm not getting rid of you. You did a great job. But now I need you to do this. So sure. we can continue. I can continue. Because I always felt, well, if I did what I wanted, I would have to leave everybody. Because nobody would accept me for that. And so it is, it's total degradation of the self. So it's just so... So interesting to so I'm at that stage where I'm starting to observe that, but I have, there's a long way to go after that. So let's develop that center and that respect for the self. Yeah, but um, I think uh, you, like uh, every one of us, has started something is growing up inside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this new thing, yes, you know. Yeah. 
affection for our right. salad. Yes, yeah. in the way we are today, um, we have a lot of qualities mm -hmm. and some things to modify. Right. Yeah, but I mean, so like we're, we're all proud. proud you know? mm -hmm. Yeah, we're not like proud and, and um, bragging about it. It's in a very humble way. Sure. In a, in a real deep appreciation yeah. of our qualities yes, and how they you. can be, how we can enhance the world. Because we have these qualities. Sure, sure. So, mm. so, I don't think we spoke on this. Yeah, it I was said, no. What does it mean to convert my life in accordance with the profound mental change? Mm -hmm. Well, for me, even if it sounds like a cliche, it's um, to surpass the suffering, you know, help others. Mm -hmm. I think I. Acting like that, I can convert my life, you know, mm -hmm. um, my, mm -hmm. yeah, right. to, to, to that profound mental mm -hmm. change, mm -hmm. yeah. Here, um, like a go to um, swimming in the life with what I have today, you know, but um, try to, to, how I said before, get training in to get um, a nice registers of um, plenty mm -hmm. register of myself, mm -hmm. you know, see myself in mm -hmm. that direction. Mm -hmm. That's that what I think. Yeah, and so what I what I did when we talked about the inner look is to change my mental direction would mean to change the look from outward to inward, to develop that inner look. Mm -hmm. And also then I said to meditate on the belief that, which is Sila said, we, I, have some inner connection that can be communicated. And this is possible because in each of us is the unfathomable bowl source of the profound. Sure, sure. Even if we feel that kind of flat thing, you know. That's because good. sometimes we go mm. deep. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Number eight. <laughs> <laughs> to Number finish. eight, yes. What do I understand or intuit by deciding through necessity to convert my life in that direction? By deciding through necessity to convert my life in that direction. What? I start. Good. To me, um, this kind of um, necessity, internal necessity, to, I'm tired of the um, provisory sense, you know, um, more and more often, you know. So um, mm -hmm. I need to get that. Yeah, <laughs> right. you know? right. uh, that's right. made me make a decision, you know, uh -huh. you know, to. to I, I don't want to live like that, you know, right. with the fear, mm -hmm. scared, conditioned by my mechanic side, right. you know, um, landscape of formation. I want a, a real change. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's not something, uh, a new compulsion, you know. It's another flavor, you know. I get tired, I get, um, I don't want to live with these um, fears, and, but um, because now I understand mm -hmm. my life will be more useful for, for, for me and for others, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I can do more than what I'm doing today. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. That kind of feeling moving me, you know, pushing me. Mm -hmm. mm. yeah. Your turn. <laughs> What's the question again? Um, what do I understand or intuit by deciding through necessity to convert my life in that direction, that profound mental direction? Um, well, 
there's also a kind of um, one of the things when you start the inner look and you start having an inner look, a little bit of an inner look, one of the things that you begin to notice is how flat your life is and how um, and how much repetition there is in it, in terms of not only out and not only in what you do around the house or how you act in the world, but repetition in terms of how you feel about yourself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and how right. how you don't feel better. You don't. Yeah. I mean, where's the real happiness? Where's the real happiness? Because it gets a little nice because the sun comes out. Or I, I'm I'm in love with somebody, or you know. Yeah, well, that's a different yeah. story. Yeah, no, but right. I mean, still. No, it's true. Right. Right. Yeah. But, so, I think the necessity, I, I feel the necessity for internal change as, as um, an exhaustion with the normal. Mm -hmm. That's what I feel. I feel exhausted by the repetitions of my life. So, I've been tired. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and, I, yeah, and I, the, the right something world. has to change. Mm -hmm. Something has to change, and it starts. Seems to have to start with me. Mm -hmm. Deciding through necessity to change means having the intention, the purpose, co-present. Mm -hmm. All my waking <coughs> hours of my life. All the waking hours of my life mm -hmm. as being like, well, this is what I really want. This is really, really, really what I want. And in a lot of ways, it's it's there already. I mean, if you look, right. Right. if you have any kind, if every once in a while you get a glimpse of a different reality, and one of the things you see is this staticness that you perceive isn't there. And everything is in movement. Everything from the molecules in the table to, to my hair falling out and my hair growing in my ears. Everything is changing all the time, right? Mm -hmm. That's what's really happening. There's, it's like... Change. It's like changes everything, changes right. everywhere all the time, constantly. So why do we fear change? And there's this imposition mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of the I mm -hmm. that wants to hold on to right. itself, right. Right? right? And in the process of holding on to itself, it creates a flat life. Mm -hmm. Depression. <laughs> a, well, a depression, right. Yeah. So. There's me. No, so I mean, we're all saying the same thing. So what I wrote is uh, that what is present is no longer unitive. That my daily life or my plans and goals do not have a register of unity. You know, I go along as well, I want to do this, I want to do that, but I'm not getting that register of unity. Uh, or that I feel weighted down by the mundaneness of life or attached to that. Uh, You know, attached to that mundaneness. I mean, certainly life is mundane, but again, it's our attitude in front of it. I mean, we do have to do our routines. We do need to clean dishes. We do need to, you know, wash our clothes and take a shower. I mean, those rituals, I mean, they're part mm -hmm. of life. But again, so it's like, then you need to change your attitude towards that. And, and what I said also is putting aside the I, you know, with all its fears, are moving on and, and transforming life so that I can serve it differently or serve myself differently. So it's what you said about, you know, this I imposing itself all the time that prevents us, it holds on to the, that routine, mm -hmm. that mundaneness, and it's yeah. so afraid of it. Like, but you know, <coughs> with, uh, with affection, again, yes. for yourself, yes. you know, you put everything, your routine on the table and a lot of things you, you're not going to change. Exactly. I mean, quickly. Right. Mm -hmm. So, right. you have to see yourself, you know, doing this tomorrow, next week, and then try to see yourself 
Yes. With the best exactly. uh, register, you know? Exactly. Make exactly. it something um, mm -hmm. I can change. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. poco a poco, mm -hmm. I can exactly. change. Exactly. So, without problem. resentment, but a lot with of affection. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's your changing your attitude. So, yeah. even though your routine is the same. Exactly. Because you're not going to change, leave your job, right. or I don't know. You have to eat, you have to do certain exactly. things. At this exactly. moment, I can't do anything else. So, this job, I mean, I just love the way, you know, we have this friend who is, you know, this very prosperous architect, and then that job dissolved, and now he's working in the factory. And he's has no, you know, the attitude towards it. Well, this is a job. This is providing me with money for my family and myself. Sure. Sure. It doesn't matter. So, so I'm not in the role of an architect anymore. Yeah. This is my role, and it's serving me well. Yes, and okay. other people don't even have a job. So I'm grateful for that. So again, it's that whole, it's that shift of attitude towards mm -hmm. the mundane or the day-to-day -day routines, which really mm -hmm. makes you feel, gives you that unity of register. Sure. So uh, let me just repeat once more that I've had perceptions of the world as being in constant flux mm -hmm. and that there's no there's no static there's no mm -hmm. static no, like the eye perceives right. the world as a, right. as a still thing mm -hmm. right nothing's changing that's such bullshit no. am I sweating anymore? A, I'm like, you know, no like you but it's say, not right? even I mean it's like every right. instant is in your skin changes is moving everything, yes. everything is happening changes. all around us all the time the moving same. And the illusion is that it's not, mm -hmm. and that it's all permanent, and that, and that we have to maintain it. And that's how we suffer because we want to maintain that. We want to maintain that non-movement. Our industry is built up on. Well, yeah, I guess it's because right. It's like the whole thing about death. Like I just want to go on. I don't want to die. I'm not going to die. This eye is going to go on forever. No. <laughs> Not. So, anyway. Okay, good. Okay, good. Close the book. Thank you very much. What a pleasure. Thank you. What a pleasure. So, mm. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. A real pleasure hugging <laughs> <laughs> for the camera. Thank you. Uh, good. Good job. Yes.